So hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, I'm Lucy and today I want to talk to you all about one of my favourite things which is NaNoWriMo. So if you haven't seen my previous video, that was basically where I announced my 2017 NaNoWriMo project. If you don't know what NaNoWriMo is, it's National Novel Writing Month every November. So it's basically this big kind of celebration of writing and everyone has to get to 50,000 words in a month. Now I explained in my previous video basically where I outlined what my novel was going to be about and what my goals were, I basically said that I wasn't aiming for 50,000 words and that is for a few reasons. Number one, it's a very very busy time of year for me, whether it's work-wise or person-wise and also I made myself quite ill last year and I don't know if you can hear but I'm already really croaky. Let's just say that I don't have the best immune system so I don't want to push myself too hard this year. All I care about is writing every day and as long as I kind of hit the 25,000 word mark, I'm going to be happy. Now last year I hit 50,000 words, so that was a huge, huge achievement for me. And the purpose of this video is basically telling you guys how I did it. So this is my NaNoWriMo tips and tricks video for helping you reach that 50,000 word goal or whatever writing goal you have, whether it's 50,000 words or 10,000 words. Hopefully with these tips you will be able to get there. So I've been doing NaNoWriMo now for like five years, so I wouldn't call myself a pro at this because I'm I'm not a professional writer, I kind of just dabble in writing. I do NaNoWriMo every year, but throughout the year I'm not constantly writing. So I see NaNoWriMo as like this opportunity for me to really get inside the life of being a writer and just kind of experiment a little bit. But these are the things that really have helped me during the month of November to get the words down and to keep sane. So number one is the advice I always give people but that I don't follow myself and that is to outline properly. Oh guys, so many years I've gone into NaNoWriMo where I didn't plan my novel and I didn't know what I was going to write. I just kind of thought, you know what, when it's midnight on the 1st of November, I'm just going to start typing and hope for the best. That never works. In the long run, it's great if you kind of think on your feet and you map things out as you go. In the long run, if you really want a well thought out and planned out novel, that isn't going to happen overnight. Like, you have to spend time outlining before you can commit to writing something. So I have started that this year. I started about like a few weeks ago kind of plotting my idea and brainstorming my idea. And even now, I'm not 100% sure that I like my idea, which I think going into NaNoWriMo is such an issue. So today, after doing this video, I'm going to just hash out my novel, kind of say to myself, like, what is the goal with this? Like, what is the point of this novel? what are the main things that need to happen in this novel and you know kind of flesh out the character stuff like that so you really do need to put the effort in before you can put you know pen to paper or start typing on your laptop because when you are midway through the month and you realize I don't know what my novel's about then you'll you'll have avoided this by doing the outlining. What I've done this year is I've invested in a program called Scrivener which is basically like a way of, it's basically like a word document but it's several word documents so you can properly draft and outline your novel. It's built for writing novels or writing in general. Also post-it notes, you can't you know underestimate the power of a post-it note. I have created kind of an outline on my wall just full of post-it notes basically saying this happens then, this happens then. I don't know if it'll help me yet but I already feel a little bit more on top of things than I did last year. I also am a massive fan, I mean this doesn't really count as outlining, but I'm a big fan of a Spotify playlist and a Pinterest board. So to get yourself into the mood of this book, you know, you want whether it's visual stimulation or an epic playlist that will just immediately get you into that world, you need some sort of inspiration that you can dip into. So basically it's about knowing what your tools are and using those tools before you start NaNoWriMo. Number two is probably the hardest tip and that is to let go of your commitments for November. Yes that is hard, yes it might be impossible especially if you have school or work but I'm talking about any social or personal commitments that you think you could drop. So whether it's a friend that you meet up with every week or whether it's like a weekly cinema trip, you just need to prioritise your days for writing. Remember that November is only four weeks and that's not a lot of time 
I mean, it's quite a precious thing to be able to devote the whole of November just to writing. Find other people that are taking part in NaNoWriMo too, create writing groups so that at least it's not a completely solitary task that you're undertaking. Also, that means you kind of get in some socialization, but it's productive. So you're not just kind of meeting up with a friend who doesn't really understand what you're doing and doesn't really support you. If you have like a writing group full of people that you know support you, then that's just really gonna help in the long run. Also, I find just giving a warning to your friends and just being like, guys, I'm sorry if I don't reply on WhatsApp all the time this month, I am writing a novel and they will understand. Number three is something I'm a big fan of and it's finding your routine. So this is a writing routine where you know you're gonna have a few hours of uninterrupted writing per day. For me during the week, because I work full time, this has to be in, in the evening. So what I've done for the month of November this month is kind of looked at my diary and my schedule and said, you know what, no, I can't do this. I need to go home and write that day. And that's really liberating, but it's also part of your routine, which I kind of established last year as well, which you can see in my writing vlogs, which I'll leave below. Basically, I vlogged the whole of November last year, just doing NaNoWriMo. And I found that if I came in, if I left work at around 6 p.m., came into the house, had dinner, sat down at my desk, had a cup of tea, and then just started writing. I have my candles on in the background, as you can see here. I'm a big fan of candles. Just like little things that like, you only light this candle when you are writing. That makes such a difference because the smell can take you back where you started in that world. Don't underestimate the power of a routine. Don't underestimate the power of little things that you only do whilst you're writing. My fourth tip is to keep a notepad and pen on you all the time. So this is so important because I don't know if you guys are like me, but I'm always getting random story inspirations, just at the drop of the hat, but in really annoying places. So I'll be like on the tube and I'm like, well, I don't have my laptop with me. How can I write this down? But if you have like a small notebook or even just the notes app on your phone, that's really, really good because then it means that you're thinking about your novel outside of your writing time so that when it is your writing time, then you can go straight back into writing with your fresh inspiration. And also you haven't lost any crucial bits of inspiration or brainstorming. So it's always good to have a notebook on you guys, always. So my next tip I have touched on briefly and it is support groups. So I talked about like finding a group of friends that you can write with, even if they're not friends, even if they're strangers. So NaNoWriMo has a local support group, I guess. So whatever city you're writing in, that will have its own NaNoWriMo group leader. They will often organize write-ins where you go to a cafe in like your city and you kind of write with everybody else in that group. I've not actually personally done that, but it's a great idea, especially if you're someone who gets bored of your own space and if you find that you distract yourself and you procrastinate when you're on your own this is important also guys don't underestimate the power of the NaNoWriMo forum. So go on there, talk about your story, talk about your issues that you're having in your story. And it really just like brings together the whole community aspect of NaNoWriMo itself. My final and most important tip guys, of which I will have to follow religiously this year, look after yourself. It's so easy to not sleep, drink loads of caffeine and eat loads of junk food in NaNoWriMo. You just won't be able to write because you'll be really run down and trust me guys, I do this every year. Last year I made myself ill and what's not great is I'm already ill now and it is two days before NaNoWriMo starts. So I'm going to be drinking lots of tea and eating lots of fruit and that is gonna be my NaNoWriMo goal is to look after myself whilst doing this. Also to take lots of breaks because looking at a Word document all day, it's essential because you have to get those words down. You've got 1,667 words to write a day but you have to break that up otherwise you're gonna burn out very, very quickly. So guys, I think that's it for my tips for NaNoWriMo. I really, really hope you enjoyed these tips guys and if you did, please do subscribe to my channel and do give it a thumbs up if you like this video and would like more. Also guys, I will leave my NaNoWriMo username down below. Basically it's Lucy and then in brackets the book bell. So I'll leave a link to that down below where you can add me as a buddy. And I'll be trying to do weekly vlogs in November just to document my progress. And I really hope these tips have helped you and best of luck with NaNoWriMo. I'll see you next time guys. Bye. <laughs>